So Sunday happened to be my birthday. I just want to thank the Seattle Seahawks. I just want to thank the Green Bay Packers for your total collapse. I just want to thank Doug Baldwin and Russell Wilson for finally connecting with each other on a pass. And most importantly, I want to thank Marshawn Lynch. Because without you, Marshawn, because you were the best player in that game yesterday, I don't win this. That's the bottom line. Reasonable expectations. You got no chance in the world down 16 nothing when you have your biggest NFL play ever, and it happens to be the teaser on Seattle and New England, and all you need is the Seahawks to win outright. Well, when you're down 16 nothing, it doesn't look good. And then suddenly weird things start happening. I mean, you just think about that game. Fake field goal attempt goes for a touchdown pass from the punter, who actually had a better pass than most of Russell Wilson's yesterday. I mean, then you recover the onside kick. You make that circus throw and catch for the two-point conversion that allowed you to go into overtime once the Packers tied up the game in the closing seconds, and then you win it on a touchdown drive rather than settling for a field goal. You go for it all, and you get it because you know in overtime in the playoffs, if they had gone for a field goal yesterday, it would have allowed Green Bay one opportunity to come down and either tie the score or win it on a touchdown. So a touchdown was the absolute best thing that could have possibly happened. And again, thank you for the Seattle Seahawks for doing what you had to do for me. As for the Green Bay Packers, oh my God, <laughs> how do you recover from that loss? You are going to have a miserable offseason. You had five field goals yesterday, five field goals, five field goals, 15 points. You just needed one of them to be a touchdown. You just couldn't convert when you got close enough. Five field goals did them in yesterday. You know, Aaron Rodgers didn't play that poorly. Seattle didn't play that well. I mean, there's a Seattle defense that gave up 130 yards rushing yesterday. Legion of boom my ass. To be quite honest with you, I think the Seahawks defense, as I pointed out all season, is overrated. They don't have the pass rushing guys that they had a year ago. Meanwhile, their offensive line. Bill Belichick's got to be looking at the game film going today. My God, did you see the pressure that the Packers put on Russell Wilson constantly? How many times was Russell Wilson back there in the pocket and he had nobody to throw to? He had to take coverage sacks or coverage-induced um, runs out of the pocket because nobody could break free. You don't have many wide receivers. As for the Patriots, they did pretty much as I expected. I thought they would hammer the Indianapolis Colts, and they certainly delivered. Um, one interesting thing, though, some. Somebody told me when I was collecting that I was lucky. Lucky? Lucky my ass. Was I lucky when I lost by a half point with the Dallas Mavericks last week? Was I lucky a couple of Tuesdays ago when I had the Chicago Bulls and they blew a 22-point lead and failed to cover? Was that lucky? No, I don't think so. The fact is, you're allowed to be lucky in this game. And the fact also is, is that ultimately, as I've always maintained, that the breaks go your way more often than not over the long haul. Now, when you're coming off a bad beat, you never think you're going to get an effing break again, okay? But I truly believe that is the case. So, on the heels of that 39 play, of which I'm now... Oh, by the way, guys, I got to tell you something. So, when it was a 16-0 game, <laughs> okay, I go into the website. I update my page with having a loser. I update Scott Delaney's page as having a loser. As a matter of fact, Delaney had the exact same teaser I did, right? I update Brad Wilton as having a winner on the under. I like to do that. I'm always next to my computer. I like to keep everybody informed when they come back to the sites because, again, I want people to see the winners and the losers. Well, then Seattle starts making its comeback. And then the game goes into overtime. And five minutes after the overtime, I can't even celebrate because now i got to go back into the site, re-add all the loss profits, add the current winning profits, change everybody's records. I've never enjoyed a half hour's worth of work more than I did yesterday, I have to be honest. So today, I'm going to push it again. Uh, today, I have a 29 play, the first ever in college basketball going for myself today. And it's your Big 12 contest. It's 7 o'clock Eastern time between Kentucky, I'm sorry, Kentucky, Texas, and Texas A&M, that game being played in Fort Worth. Normally a 15-dime play, as I told you yesterday. 15-dime plays, five, you know, 99.9% .9 of my uh, plays are rated between 5 and 15, so a 15-dime is usually at the top of the heap. Uh, today, first ever 20-dime play. That's how much I like this game. So it is stronger than the 15-dime winner I had on Stanford over Connecticut on Saturday. It is also stronger than the 15-dime NBA play I had on the um, Cleveland Cavaliers over the LA Lakers on uh, Thursday night. And it's the half-price play of the day. You get it for half-price by using coupon code 
20 dimes, 20 dimes, that's 20-D-I-M-E-S, 20 dimes, 20-D-I-M-E-S. Um, Gabriel DuPont, uh, the other big feature discounted play today, save $77, get a 75-dime winner, number four in a row, an eight out of 10. It's on your game between Oklahoma and Kansas, going at nine Eastern time, part of Big Monday, nationally televised tilt. You get it for just $22 by using coupon code GABE. And in fact, I'm wondering if I have the right coupon code there, guys. Hold on one second. Let me just check for you. Yes. Mm, yes, it is GABE. G-A-B-E. You get it for $22 by using coupon code GABE, his first name. Interesting situation with him yesterday. He had a 75 dime play on uh, the game between New England and Indianapolis to stay under the total. And when he released the play, it was 53 and a half points. And it was about... 52 and a half to 53 and a half points, I would say, up until 1, 1 Eastern time yesterday. Then, I guess everybody woke up and they realized it was going to rain. Like I told you yesterday in the video report, they were going to have like monsoons in the second half of that game. And suddenly, that line started to get pushed down. It got pushed down to 52. It got pushed down to 51 and a half in some places. And then, about an hour and a half before kickoff, it started coming back up again, settling at around 52 and a half. So we counted it as a push here at the site for record-keeping purposes because, listen, I think the majority of you, just like DuPont, won the game. Some of you may have pushed. Some of you may have even lost. So just take the push. That's all I can tell you for record-keeping purposes. Uh, you can see all the results of his other 75-dime releases. And, of course, he just hit 100-dime winner number 12 out of 14 on UC Davis outright over Fullerton. Uh, on Saturday, you've gotten his plays every single day since Wednesday at discounted prices. And the same thing goes today. You get it for $22 by using Gabe as your coupon code. Okay, let's get to your complimentary plays. Uh, Villanova. I backed Villanova as a small five-dime play on Saturday, fully disclosing in my analysis that I was a little concerned with the Wildcats at Pennsylvania in a Big Five City Series clash because they may have their eyes cast forward to this big Monday showdown at Georgetown in Big East play. And I think that's what happened. They sleepwalk through the first half as an 18-point favorite, only managed to win by 15 points. But that's okay, because if they had won that game by 33 points, they'd probably be laying six tonight or five and a half instead of four. I like Villanova minus four in this spot. Hoyas are off a 61-59 to win at home against Butler and a 78-72 win at DePaul. They're 3-0 and in home conference play so far. Yes, they've beaten Creighton and Marquette by 15 and 6 points respectively before beating Butler. But this is a one-loss Nova team that comes into town. They have covered seven of their last ten as a Big East road chalk, and I will ride Villanova once more in this spot. Uh, Duke is my other complimentary play. Minus 15 points over um, Pittsburgh here this evening. Uh, Pittsburgh 0-5 against the spread on the road. A very poor shooting team. You know, Duke had won 41 straight games at home before losing to Miami of Florida last week. Then what happened after those two losses against NC State and Miami of Florida, which the Duke defense really was the main culprit because they allowed the Wolfpack and the Hurricanes to shoot almost 54% from the field. Well, they battened down the hatches against Louisville, held Rick Pitino's Cardinals to 29.5% shooting and rolled to the win. Pittsburgh, uh, previous ACC road games, they won by one point at Boston College, eh, and they got drilled by 18 points in Raleigh against North Carolina State. Uh, they also lost on the road to Indiana in early December by 13. Then in the Maui Invitational, uh, they lost to San Diego State by 17. And before the Maui Invitational, they had a prep game at Hawaii, and the Rainbow Warriors beat them by four. So Duke is a most a month ugh, can't even speak a monster favorite here tonight. I don't have any problem with that because I just don't think Coach K is going to let his team, after they finally got off the schneid and snapped the brief two-game losing streak with a good defensive effort. Um, against Louisville on Saturday, fall back into their old ways. And also, I think a Duke offense that has really struggled here the last three games, other than the freshman Okafor, will get it going here to, tonight against Pittsburgh. So, again, Duke at home, Villanova as your other free pick. I wish you well, guys, and I'll talk to you again on Tuesday when we do this one more time.